Well guys, today's video is one I am very excited about. We're going to be upgrading the Mini to these Bilstein B6 dampers. We're also going to be putting new top mount bushings from PowerFlex on the rear dampers. And on the front, we're going to be installing these fixed camber plates, which also act as strut tower defenders. So it's a two for one on that. This will be in the second video. We'll give this its own video and the dampers will be today. This won't be a very strict step-by-step -step DIY. There's a lot of other videos and forum posts on how to install these. I'll give you kind of an idea so if you are pretty handy you should be able to do it just from this video but don't expect things like torque specs or very specific instructions more what I'm gonna be talking about is the advantages that are offered by these B6s what the different numbers mean on the bill sign dampers and then when we get to the camber plate that will be a very specific DIY because there isn't a whole lot of options out there and there's not a whole lot of different DIYs on how to install this so we'll get more specific with that so before we make our way over to the car I want to talk about why I chose bill Stein and why I chose the BC Sixes. Bill Stein has been making sports suspension for decades. They're a very well respected company. They make stuff all the way down from OEM parts all the way up to race spec equipment that's run in endurance races. It's an extremely high quality brand. They make a lot of great parts and they make it for a lot of different cars. So all of their dampers are named with the letter B and then a number after it. And then as you get into the coilovers, they have a little bit of a different naming scheme. But if you're looking at the B4 dampers, those are going to come in black and those are probably the OEM equipment that you received on on your German car. If it's an American car, Japanese car, it'll be an OEM equivalent. If you step up to the B6s, which is what I've got, it's going to work with stock ride height or a slight drop, and it's going to give you a little bit more of a heavy duty damper. It's going to give you a little bit more of a sporty feel. Then if you get the B8, it is the exact same damping setup as the B6. It's just designed to run with a lower spring. So if you're doing something big like an inch to a two inch drop, they'll be able to accommodate this, where if you're doing a small small drop, you're going to go with the B6s. As you move on from there, you can get preset kits where it'll come with the springs and the dampers and they're kind of designed to work together and then you move off into coilovers. So really for most people, it's going to be the B6 or the B8 depending on what spring you're planning on running. I'm going to keep the stock springs on the Mini for now. I might go to a slight drop later, but even then it'll only be maybe a three quarter of an inch drop. It won't be a lot and these can still accommodate that. I have a full set of PowerFlex bushings that will be going on the front and rear later, but for now, the these are the ones we're going to be installing first just because we're going to have these springs out. These sit on top of it and I'll show you how those go on a little bit later. But it just replaced the factory rubber bushing that's worn out and old and it'll give it a little bit more control over what this damper does. And then like I said in part two, we're going to go over the camera plate. So we'll get to that a little bit later. So let's go ahead and move over to the car and we'll start taking everything out so we can put our new stuff back in. All right, so here we are looking at the front damper. You have three things you're going to have to remove. The brake line is held here. We have a speed sensor here. And then back here we have the end link for the sway bar. So 16 millimeter nut here, pry these out. It's easier if you spray everything down with some penetrating oil. It'll help slide these rubber bushings out easier and you'll make sure that you do not snap the pinch bolt in the back. Speaking of which, the pinch bolt in the back is an 18 millimeter and then the bolts for the top hat are 13 millimeters and that's all you're going to have to remove. Once you have everything loosened up, you're going to slide the knuckle down. Once the knuckle is completely slid off of the body of the strut here, you can just undo your top hat bolts and slide everything out. It's a little bit easier said than done, but I'm going to go ahead and get that taken care of and we'll move our way to the back. So just to save you guys some headache, just to compare side to side, on this side, I use PB Blaster on everything. I hit the strut, I hit the pinch bolt in the back, I hit all the rubber bushings. Everything came off super easy. I mean, these popped right out. As soon as the pinch bolt is off, the knuckle is a slight push and it just dropped right off the strut. The other side, no PB Blaster. The pinch bolt broke and I had to drill it out and replace it with a different bolt and nut. So that was horrible. Don't even get me started on that. Um, trying to get the strut to slide off of the knuckle was just horrible. I was beating this flat surface here with a hammer trying to get everything off. Using some sort of penetrating oil, PB Blaster, WD-40, whatever you prefer, is really going to make this job a lot easier. So I highly, highly recommend going out, letting everything soak for about half an hour before you come out and try to tackle this job. You will thank me, I promise. So now that we have everything out of the way, all I have to do is go up top, unbolt everything, and this will slip right out. And then we can go over to the bench, put the spring on the new strut, slide the new bill sign strut back in, and we can go take it for a test drive. Okay, so we have our fully assembled strut. So brand new bill sign strut. 
We have the camera plate mounted to the top hat, so stick around for part two to see how to put that in and how that works. We've got everything ready to go, so we'll slide this back in the car. Again, I'm going to lube this up just a little bit and make everything easier on me. We'll tighten everything down, and then we'll be able to get onto the back. So install is just going to be the reverse of everything going together. So you're going to install it up in the top first, and then align up the knuckle, and slowly raise the knuckle up with a jack, and let it slip over the bottom of the strut. Again, it's a little bit easier if you go ahead and clean out the inside of the knuckle here, just to make sure everything is good to go. You can even wipe it down with something abrasive like a Scotch-Brite pad or some steel wool. So the back of the Mini is a little bit different than the front. You have two 13 millimeter bolts at the top, and then you have a much larger bolt down at the bottom. I believe it is a 21 millimeter, but you're gonna wanna put a jack underneath the bottom of the spring as you remove that bolt, and then lower the jack down to release the pressure on the spring and the damper. You can then do the two 13 millimeter bolts and drop that out. But before that, make sure you undo the clips for the speed sensor and for the brake line, and you'll just be able to thread this out towards the middle of the car. And then once it's out, we'll take it over to the bench, and I'll show you how we're going to solve those new top bushings before we put this back in. All right, so here we have our factory strut with the spring still on it, and we have our new Bill Stein damper. And this is our Power Flex bushing, which is going to sit on top here. So half of it goes underneath this little hat, and the other half goes on top. So we'll be pulling all this apart, and when we reassemble it, we'll be using this new damper, and I'll show you that process once we get this off. So the install process is going to be the reverse of everything you took off the stock damper. So you're going to have your rubber little spring isolator down here, the spring, the top isolator, this little top hat here, and then we have the, I guess, upper top hat. And what's going to happen is this larger bushing is going to slot in here in the bottom. You've got this little metal insert, and you're going to use the provided lube for and then we're going to put the smaller one that sandwiches on top. And so what that's going to do is it's going to help give us better handling because it's going to keep the strut from moving quite as much. The stock piece, I mean, is so squishy. I can just deform it with my hand and think of how much pressure your car is putting on things like this. So what we'll do is we'll put some spring compressors on the rear, get this installed, and then we can put this back on the car and we'll finally get to drive it. One thing I didn't mention before is a really nice thing about Bill Steins is you can ship them back into Bill Stein and have them rebuilt. I know there are other companies that offer this, but it's nice that it's a service that Bill Stein offers. So in the future, instead of having to spend $700 to get a new full set of shocks, I can just take them out, send them into Bill Stein, get them rebuilt, and I'll have them back. A, I'm not wasting unnecessary resources, and B, it'll be a lot cheaper than replacing them. You can also have them revalved while you're there, so if maybe for your specific application, you're like, hey, I'd like my front dampers to be a little bit stiffer, or I'd like the rears to be a little softer, or whatever you want, or if you want all four to be stiffer, you can request that. You can even send them in the spring rates that you're using, and they will try to match them to that spring rate. It's a really great little service you can have on the side of, I want to step up into something different or I just want to refresh set of dampers, you can do that as well. So a nice option to have knowing that you're buying into a little bit of a better product and something that you can keep for a very long time. I was going to wrap up this video by driving the car around, but I found that that's a little bit more noisy, especially in this car because it's not very quiet. So it might be a little bit more difficult for you to hear me. But I have loved these Bill Sign dampers. I've had them on for probably 5,000 miles. I've done two track days on them. They handle extremely well. I think they're even a little bit more comfortable than the stock dampers, and they handle the stock springs extremely well. Uh, both at Roebling Road and Atlanta Motorsports Park, they took some beatings, they went over curbs, no problem, you know, driving back and forth to work and school, they have been great. So I really have nothing bad to say about them. Of course, it's an extremely quality product. Bill Stein has been making shocks for cars and race cars and all sorts of things for years, so they definitely know what they're doing. And of course, it felt like an extremely high quality product just holding it in my hand, looking at all the detail. It's a great product. I can't really say anything bad about it. It's a little bit expensive. You could step up to coilovers without spending too much more extra money. But I would rather have a really nice quality damper than kind of a budget coilover is my kind of thought process on that, especially for a street car and especially one that I can get rebuilt for a very marginal cost and just keep using for the life of the car. So really, I can't think of any reason why you wouldn't buy them other than just the cost of getting them. They are a great product. It handles well. It's comfortable. And 
you know, the yellow dampers do look pretty cool, I'm not going to lie. So if you guys have any questions or comments about them, of course, feel free to drop those below. Hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next week.